there's been an enormously oh heated debate amongst professors of immunology and vaccinology internationally um just looking into and sort of considering what's been going on in the uk um my us colleagues in particular are very very nervous about it um so the only way i can present it to you is like this that um the the the, the committee in the uk the jcvi really did go into this you know with um, you know, their best attempt to make a, a pragmatic decision in the heat of battle faced with a very difficult situation, and they feel like they can stand by their calculation. very hard because in vaccines the devil is in the detail and you do get somewhat different answers in terms of amount of antibody durability of antibody even quality affinity of antibody depending on quite small changes to the dose you give um the time interval how many boosts you you you, you give that does make people nervous about um you know fiddling with the protocol that was licensed <laughs> protocol was granted um was 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 licensed on the basis of showing a certain level of um efficacy um and building the master plan around that um and now we're kind of saying well let's let's go off piece completely and take a punt on something for which we have no data set but you know you can pretty much bet that um even the first dose extended over a longer time period will give people a certain level of neutralizing antibodies and that might get us out of trouble in in the short term so so it's not so much that i think there are sort of complications or dangers just that we may be straying from an optimized protocol into a suboptimal protocol let your arm go loose mr harrison that's great Pinprick. Well, that's quick. Right. I would be very concerned because certainly looking at the data from the Pfizer BioNTech in detail, it's quite clear that that second so-called booster dose of the vaccine 21 days after the priming dose is really important for getting very strong neutralizing antibody responses. So my concern is that we just don't know what a longer gap will do, particularly because these RNA vaccines are very new technology. It's possible that your immune response is tailing off and then the booster the boost won't give you as much of the protective antibody responses that you need. What we do know is that certainly for the for the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine, that even people that just had one dose were protected from getting the disease from disease. So so it looks like you can get some protection. These things are never hard and fast. It's all about the proportion of people. Um, and you could argue that in the current crisis that we're in, anything is better than nothing. But I think we have to be very careful not to undermine the effectiveness of these vaccines. Going back in the history of vaccinology, we often do have a kind of mix and match approach approach to prime versus boost. So um, if you think about, um, oh, you know, if you if the first time you saw the um, the spike antigen was in the context of an adenovirus, um, 
it might be rather good to see it the second time round in a different context, so that the only common feature is the spike from the virus, and you focus all of your immune response on that, not on the other bits, um, like the, the vector sequence or anything. So I can think of a basic immunology rationale for doing it, but it's not a place that we normally go to, except in this incredible emergency. Thank you.